So think light and crispy fish topped with tangy slaw, finished with a creamy crema, all on top of a toasted tortilla. That is a fish taco. Let me show you how to make it. To make the slaw for this dish, I'm gonna go ahead and cut up a third of a small red cabbage. How I like prepping my cabbage is by first cutting it in half and then taking one of those halves and cutting the top third off of it because doing it like this makes it easier to cut it thinly. And speaking of which, go ahead and thinly slice it. And then after that, I like to cut a cheek off of the cabbage and then thinly slice that as well. Just doing it like this makes it easier to slice. Once you're done with that, go ahead and get it in a bowl and season it with some salt. And then of course, season it with some pepper. For the acid component, I'm gonna go ahead and use some vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is fine. I'm using rice vinegar here and a drizzle of oil. And with my gloved hand, I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up while squeezing it at the same time, which will allow the salt to penetrate the cabbage, which will help season it. So for the tartar sauce crema thing, I'm gonna go ahead and use some capers. For the capers, I like roughly chopping it. You don't have to, but I feel like it would help release some of the caper juices better. Once you have it chopped up, it should look something like this, if this is the consistency you're going for. And now get that into a bowl, and into that same bowl, go ahead and use some either sour cream, yogurt, in this case I'm using Greek yogurt. I'm gonna use about a tablespoon's worth here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go in with some mayo as well. Feel free to go ahead and zest in the zest of one lemon. It'll just add a nice freshness and a nice brightness to this sauce. And then I'm gonna cut off a cheek of the lemon and squeeze that in as well. This will provide the acidity. Go ahead and stir it up. Once it's mixed through and you feel like it's a little too thick, as in it's not drizzling consistency, you can go ahead and just drizzle in a slight touch of water. Try to add less than more because you can always add in more if it's not the right consistency. Now go ahead and add in some salt and some pepper to season it up. And then also some sugar to balance out the acidity in this. Stir it up again and when your sauce has this kind of consistency, it is done. The star of this dish, I am using half a pound of cod. You can use any white fish that's flaky and not too oily because we're gonna be deep frying this. So you don't want an oily fish here. All I'm gonna do now is cut this fish into fish finger size. For me, I was able to cut my fish into about 12 pieces. You might end up with less, you might end up with more depending on the size of your fish and depending on how big you cut them. But once they're cut up, let's head on to the stove. I will be using a wok to deep fry the fish. And I like using a wok because it is narrow at the bottom and widens at the top, which will allow me to use less oil than if I were to use a Dutch oven. To the pot you're using, go ahead and pour in fry oil to about halfway up the pot, though not quite halfway. Once the oil's in, go ahead and preheat this so that the oil comes up to 375 degrees. While we're waiting for the oil to heat up, we're gonna go ahead and get the dredging station ready. In this first container, I'm gonna go ahead and go in with one cup of flour as the second one as well. And to the second one, I'm gonna go in with two heaping teaspoons of cornstarch. This will provide a crispness to your batter and also a lightness to the batter. And speaking of lightness, I'm gonna go in with one teaspoon of baking powder. Now to both of these, I'm gonna go ahead and season it with some salt and some pepper just to the first one. I'm also gonna season up my fish. I'm gonna just do three pieces for now, but you can season your fish as you go. You don't have to season them all ahead of time. To ensure that my batter is airy, I'm gonna use some sparkling water. I'm gonna use about one can's worth, which is 330 milliliters, and I'm just gonna add this to the second container. I'm not adding it in all at once because I wanna gauge on how wet or how dry this is. So I'm gonna pour in half first, stir, 
and then if it seems too thick go ahead and pour in some more i'm going for a quite loose consistency i would say a little thinner than pancake batter because i want it to be light and airy almost tempura like so for me i use one whole can so but if you want your batter to be thicker don't use a whole can or use less sparkling water and once your batter is thin like this it should be ready all right so once your oil has come up to about 375 degrees we're ready to fry to batter the fish you're going to first want to put it in the flour and you want to make sure that all edges of the fish is coated in the flour and this will help the batter stick to the fish speaking of which go ahead and put your fish into the wet batter and move it around making sure that the batter is also coating all over the fish once your fish is all coated with the batter go ahead and let some of it drain off and then dunk it in your oil what i like to do is hold on to the fish like this and swirl it around to let one side puff up and so that when you let go it will float like this because if not it would just sink to the bottom and go ahead and repeat this with the rest for my wok i only fried about three at a time you don't want to overcrowd it because you're going to drop the temperature of the oil a lot so about halfway through i flip it to make sure that all sides are perfectly golden if not you'll have one side that's lighter than the other after frying for three to four minutes they should be nice and golden and cooked all the way through and when they are you can go ahead and take them all out and get them on a wired rack lined with paper towels this will help absorb all the excess oil so something like this but as soon as it comes out of the fryer go ahead and season it with some salt and if you've done it correctly it should be nice and crispy just like this Once the fish is done, let's heat up some tortillas. Now you can heat it up however you want, but this is how I do it. I like to get a pan on about medium to medium high heat with a little bit of oil and I throw my tortilla in there mopping up the oil so that the surface is evenly covered. I'm going to go ahead and cook this tortilla until both sides is nicely charred like this and once it is, it's time to assemble. First thing I like to do is dollop a spoonful of sauce on each of the tortillas. By doing this, I feel like it makes the fish less soggy, but you can assemble it however you want. After that, I go ahead and nestle my fish into the tortilla, and then I'll top each of the tacos with my cabbage slaw. This will just give it an acidity and also a nice crunch. And then I go in with a last drizzle of sauce on each of the tacos. And what I like to do is also put a wedge of avocado on these. It adds a nice creaminess to it on top of the crema tartar sauce that's already there. And then last but not least, I just top it with some cilantro. I just tear it up. I don't even bother to cut it. And once your tacos look like this, it is time for the taste test. All right, so when you make these things, I think you just gotta try it right away so they don't get soggy. So let's give this a try. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Woo, all right. That is everything I want in a fish taco. Like I said in the beginning, the batter on the fish is light and crispy. It's pretty much a tempura. And then the slaw, it's not overly sour, but it's just tangy enough to cut through the uh, fattiness of the deep fried fish, plus that crema as well. That crema is interesting because it's like a mix between a, like a Mexican crema and a tartar sauce, I guess you could say. Because every time I have a deep fried fish i always go with the tartar sauce so that's where that inspiration came from and also this fish can be used for fish and chips as well so try it out let me know how it goes in the comments below for more videos like this hit the subscribe button that one right there and for my previous video go ahead and hit that one right there and 
hit that like button while you're down there, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. Bye.